Hayward Field, on the campus of the University of Oregon in Eugene, is one of the meccas of track and field and is named for decorated track coach Bill Hayward. He brought Oregon's track program to prominence, leading the team for more than 40 years. It is also known as Tracktown USA, not just for the success of the Oregon track team, but for hosting multiple Olympic track and field trials. But Hayward Field is also the birthplace of Nike. While there might not be one single moment, if there is one single place, it would be this ground. Colonel Bill Hayward was succeeded by the legendary Bill Bowerman. Bowerman came to Oregon in 1948 as a bona fide war hero. He was larger than life, a teacher, designer, and innovator who led the men of Oregon until 1973. He was always tinkering with shoes, clothes, track surfaces, performance drinks, anything to give his athletes an advantage. He cobbled custom shoes by hand for his runners, always looking for ways to make shoes lighter. One of his favorite guinea pigs was Phil Knight, a middling middle distance runner who ran at Oregon from 1956 to 59. While the Nike name wouldn't come for several more years, its forerunner, Blue Ribbon Sports, was born in 1964 with $500 each and handshake agreement between Knight and Bowerman. Steve Prefontaine, the man many consider to be the greatest American middle distance runner ever, also ran under Bowerman from 70 to 1973. Struggling to make ends meet as an amateur athlete, Pre came to work for Blue Ribbon Sports as National Director of Public Affairs in 1973. It was a title he chose for himself, and in it he played a key role in spreading Nike product to other top track athletes. Without his dogged determination and fame, it is possible Nike never survives its early struggles. As much for his personality as for his commitment to building the fledgling company, Phil Knight would later refer to Pre as the soul of Nike. Once or twice a year, Nike offers guided tours for global employees, called the Eugene Experience. Tours are led by some of Nike's earliest employees who tell tales of the company's birth and growth in Eugene, Oregon. To visit Hayward Field is to visit hallowed ground, as from this unassuming track grew the number one athletic company in the world. Today, more than 35,000 employees work for Nike, which has revenues of over $21 billion and indirectly employs almost 1 million people around the world. But Hayward Field is only part of the Nike Eugene experience. The second key piece is far more tragic. On May 30, 1975, Steve Prefontaine is killed in a single car accident, a mere mile east of the track he once dominated. A spontaneous memorial is created on the site and it is formalized as Pre's Rock in 1997. Pre's Rock remains a pilgrimage site to this day and not just for Nike employees. Runners from everywhere continue to visit Pre's Rock and leave mementos such as running bibs, ribbons, and medals. With his rebellious spirit and aggressive style on the track, Steve Prefontaine made running cool. As a competitor, he held himself to a higher standard than winning, and he remains an inspiration to runners more than 35 years after his death. On the day I visited, I was fortunate enough to have both Hayward Field and Pre's Rock to myself. At Hayward, I felt a sense of history and as a Nike employee, more than a little gratitude to all who'd come before me in making Nike what it is. But at Pre's Rock, I couldn't find any sense of hope, only loss. It was a somber end to my Eugene experience, but a tribute I'm grateful to have paid. <laughs>